Welcome back. In the last example, we've built an agent with four database tools. Let's take a quick look at our agent with our four tools. So the first one is create customer and we are using the Superbase client here to run the command dot table and dot insert. In our get customer tool, we're using dot select dot equals email later on in the update command we use the update and in the delete we use the delete but there's a problem this is a highly restrictive structure what i mean by that is when we want to execute something more flexible we're still limited by the hard-coded queries inside our tools so for today let's create an agent with a single tool that will have the flexibility to both generate its own SQL, validate the SQL, and then run it against the same Superbase database. Okay, let's go ahead and do that right now. For this, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the same file. We're just going to copy this whole thing, paste it into a new file, which I'll name agent-sql.py. I'll save this just to be sure that it's still running. I will run it with poetry, run python agent sql.py, and we'll just give it a quick run. I will just say hello, and it's still working and life is good. Let's just take a quick look at our database now. Once in Superbase, we can just go and refresh, and sure enough, we have three rows. That means our script is still working. Now we're going to make a few changes to the script. First of all, we're going to get rid of the Superbase client. We're going to use Psycop G, which is an open source library for direct access to PostgreSQL. So it's a PostgreSQL database adapter for Python. We're going to install this using Poetry, and we're going to use this driver to get directly to our local PostgreSQL instance instead of using the Superbase SQL driver. And what is the reason for that? Well, the reason is if you look at the operations allowed by the Superbase client, they're limited to fetching data, inserting data, updating data, upserting data, and deleting data. What we'd like to do is the ability to have arbitrary SQL executed against our database. That could be a select query, could be an update query, it could be multiple delete queries. We want our LLM to be smart enough to generate our SQL and be able to run it against our Superbase instance. Unfortunately, the Superbase driver currently does not provide the ability to run arbitrary SQL code, and there are good reasons, but for today's task, we want our agents to be smart enough to generate their own SQL and run it. And for that reason, we're going to use Psycop G, which is a popular open source PostgreSQL library for Python. Okay, so we have our Superbase table, and we we have our three rows and we have this library available. Let's go ahead and install this first. In Visual Studio Code, let's first install Psycop G. And for that, I'm going to use Poetry. And it will be a Poetry at Psycop G2 binary. That's the name of our library. Once you execute this, it will install the library as well as its dependencies. And you can verify that by looking at the pyproject.toml file. You should see this listed here. It may be a slightly different version for you, but as long as it's here, that means it's all good. We're going to close this file and close the terminal. We're going to start editing our agent file. The first thing we need to do is get rid of the Superbase client lines. So we no longer need the Superbase client. We're going to use something else. And before we do that, it's a good idea to copy the localhost values from the Superbase execution when we first launched Superbase. Open your terminal and locate the information where it says DB URL and copy this to a safe location. This is the information we need. This is the username. This is the password. This is the IP address for the connection string, which is our local host. Most importantly is this port and the database name. This is different than the standard PG SQL port. Normal Postgres port is 5432, but Superbase port is 54,322 for the local Postgres instance, and it's 21 for its own API server and the studio. Take a note of this connection string because we're going to need it for the 
PsychOps G connection string. Once you have this information handy, let's go back to Visual Studio. Inside Visual Studio now, we can start adding our connection information. On line 12, we're going to add our first connection information, which will be a connection to a PostgreSQL server. We're going to use the connect facility and I will do the imports shortly. And now I can add the import and that is from PsychOp G2. We'll import the connect and database error because we'll be checking for errors. So we'll actually use this connect function for our connection. Our host name will be 127001. Our database name will be Postgres, user is Postgres, password is Postgres, and the port is 54322. This is all the information that was passed to us at the launch time when we launched Superbase. Okay, so this connection will be created when we launch our agent. And we're going to pass this as a dependency to our agents as well as our tools. So we're just creating this connection variable here. We're also going to get rid of this Pydentic model for customer because we're now opening our agent to different types of SQL queries. We no longer need a structured output. We just need the agent to tell us the results of the operation. Let's get rid of this. And now we're going to go and change our system prompt. So the system prompt, we need to update this. And I've prepared a system prompt and I'll explain in detail what we're doing here. Pass the structure of our customer table, instruct our agent to create SQL query that fits this table structure. You can do it without a table structure or the scheme of the table. However, it becomes a lot more fluid and unpredictable. So now our system prompt is done and let's examine what we're doing. You are an expert SQL developer and use the SQL validation tool, which we're going to write to check the query for correctness. If it's valid, use the SQL execution tool. So we're going to create two tools. The first one will be validating the SQL query and the second one will be executing the SQL query. And we're here passing the structure of our customer table. How do we get this? Inside the Superbase interface, if you're in the table editor, click your table and on the bottom right, there is this definition button. Click on the definition button and this is your DDL or SQL definition for the customer table. If you have multiple tables, it's good to also grab all structures for all tables and that way the agent will know how to create join queries or queries that span multiple tables, inner and outer joins. We currently only have one table, so I'm just going to copy and paste the structure of this table. It's a great idea when you have a complete schema to pass as much information to the agent as possible so that your queries are a lot more accurate. Just copy this. Back in Visual Studio Code, you can just replace this definition if your table changes. But basically, this is our system prompt. We are passing relevant information and asking our agent to come up with the SQL query for ourselves so we don't have to code it. And then we're going to validate the SQL query and then execute it. Okay, now let's change our agent. And for this, we're just going to get rid of the result type customer. And we're going to continue to use the Llama 3.370 billion versatile model. And the system prompt will be this system prompt. So we've updated the agent. Now let's get rid of all these tools. We're going to delete all four of them and we're going to delete the seed function as well. We no longer need the seed function and I'm going to get rid of it here as well. And here for the dependencies, by the way, instead of Superbase, since we don't have Superbase, we're just going to pass our connection. So that will be the only thing that we need to pass. Now we have the agent and now let's write our two tools. The first will be the SQL validation tool and the second one will be the SQL execution tool. Okay, there are a couple of small typos. Developer, and this will be a validation tool. Okay, so our system prompt is, you are a SQL developer, validate the query SQL. So we're just injecting it here. For correctness against PostgreSQL standard, return true or false. And that's as simple as it gets. So this is our SQL validation tool. Now let's write our SQL execution tool. The name of our tool will be run query. Now we are passing the context here. And with the context, we're going to pass our connection. 
So context.dependencies.cursor is what we need to use. And with the cursor, we can execute the SQL, which is also being passed as part of the input to the tool. So the tool will receive the connection in its runtime context and the SQL from the LLM. It will run the SQL and then commit at the final E block. If there is any exception, we're just going to print the error. But other than that, it should just be running the SQL on the Superbase database. OK, these are our two tools. SQL validation tool and SQL execution tool. They're both tied to the at agent with the decorator at agent dot tool. Now we need to modify our main block. And the only thing we need to change here is to close the connection. So if the connection is not none, we're just going to do connection dot close. So we are cleaning up after the execution. OK, so this all looks good. We're going to save this and give it a test drive. I'm going to open and clear the terminal and launch our agent. Poetry run agent SQL. Let's also make it a little bigger. Run our first query. And our first query, I'm just going to get all customers and see what we receive. First, it's validating the SQL query. And then it's executing the SQL query. We get the three rows from our data. We haven't passed any SQL language here. We just said get all customers. Let's go ahead and inspect that these indeed are the three customers in Superbase. If we go back to our table and refresh the table, we still only have three rows with the same data that was returned. OK, now let's go ahead and delete all of these. So I will just say delete all customers and see what happens. It was validated, it was run, and the result from the query came as an empty string. That means that there should be no customers left in the customers table. We are back at the table, we'll refresh, and all of the customers are gone. All right, now let's go ahead and add some customers. We're gonna run our agent, and we'll ask our agent to create test data. Insert 10 rows of customer data. So that's the only thing we're going to ask our agent. We will ask it to come up with the data so it will use the proper libraries. And here we have our table. Let's go ahead and open Superbase and inspect our table now. And if we refresh our table, sure enough, we have test data with a bio, full name and email. We didn't have to write a single line of SQL query. OK, now we have our customers. Um, Let's quit this and run it one more time. Now, in our agent, let's retrieve all of our customers one more time. Get all customers. And we should see a query that says select all from public.customers. That sounds right. And here is our table with all of our customers. Now, let's go ahead and delete one of them. So I will just copy this email, jando at example.com, and say, delete customer this one and our query will be delete from and sure enough the customer was deleted now let's go ahead in superbase studio and check our table yep it just updated and now we have nine rows of data so if we now pull our customers and say get all customers even if you have a typo the tool is smart enough to return the table with nine rows only. This is our customers. Now let's get rid of all of them one more time. And this will execute. And so no customer should be left now. We're going to examine our table, refresh. Our table is empty. Let's go ahead and add another round of customers. Use names from the American Independence War. That's our prompt. And we want 10 test customers added to our Superbase table. So our model is now generating the SQL. And once that's ready, that will be inserted into the Superbase database. We already start seeing some names. And here is our database table with the new additions. Let's go ahead and check that in Superbase. Refresh the table. And we have George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, 
and everyone else is added to this table. Okay, so this looks really interesting. Let's go back to our code. Now we have the ability to basically execute any type of query. Let's go ahead and update one of the rows and we're going to search by name this time. So I'm just going to copy George Washington's um, name and here we're going to launch an update query. So let's just say update George Washington with the new bio founder of the Republic. Let's just update the bio here. And it says it was successful updated. Let's go ahead and check. George Washington was the leader of the Continental Army. Once we refresh, it becomes founder of the Republic. And the SQL query was automatically generated for this. Really, really good stuff. We don't even have to search by email. It's able to find it by full text name as well. So that looks really, really good. Let's just try to stretch this example a little bit. What happens if we want to create a new table? You can experiment with that. So let's go ahead and create an orders table. Create table orders and link it to customers via customer ID. Let's just see what happens here. Okay, so here is the SQL query and it's a create table query and it will likely generate one table for us. Let's go ahead to Superbase and sure enough, we have an orders table already created. So there's nothing in the orders table, but it's already created. Now you can go to the definition and see whether it fits our prompt. And we see that there's an ID and there's a customer ID and there is a constraint orders primary key and the orders customer ID, which is pointing to the customer's tables ID with this customer ID. So it actually looks pretty good. This is what we asked it to do, but this is not in our prompt yet. So let's just go ahead and add a simple command. Let's see if it will be able to understand what we want. Create an order for an iPhone for George Washington. That's our SQL query. A lot of times this will fail. The reason is because the prompt does not include the definition of the orders table, but once you add it, it most certainly will succeed. So to create an order for an iPhone, it appears you may need to store that information. So it was not able to do it and that's the expected result. But this just shows us that we can create an agent, add tools that can generate any SQL code and execute it. Now, a small word of caution, in production systems, generating SQL and executing it on a live system is probably not a great idea for many reasons, but including data privacy, security, and all sorts of other things, the models, the SQL that comes out of the model is unpredictable still, and there should be a lot of protections in place for malicious code, injections, so on and so forth. But I just wanted to demonstrate this capability that we can use LLMs to produce this kind of assets and run them against our databases. So hopefully this was an interesting example and you learned something. See you next time.